find pleasure in every moment, indulge in every whim, let lesser races feel the burden of their crude lives. We are beyond such concerns or worries. Every power is ours to use, every sensation ours to experience. We are truly masters of the galaxy, and all others exist only to satisfy our curiosities. We have earned our position of power, let us forever taste the fruits of such achievement. Time itself is ours to command, we are eternal. Translated Eldari glyphs found amidst the ruins of the Shrine of Celestial Grandeur. If the legends are to be believed, there was one being born into the warp from the depravity and corruption of an entire species. Over thousands and thousands of Terran years, the ancient Eldari, a race with souls of limitless passion and nearly limitless psychic capabilities allow themselves to be consumed with decadence. Because of their powers, passions, and unique connections to the Immaterium, the disturbances their depravity touched off were singularly dangerous. Even just this vague bit of knowledge is little more than rumor to most inhabitants of the galaxy. Still fewer are privy to the secrets that lie within the shrouded and nearly inaccessible vaults of the Black Library, the hidden craft world that is the ancient repository of Eldari knowledge located deep within the webway. Within these somber chambers, ancient manuscripts point to an unspeakable event that changed the galaxy forever. From the perverse thoughts, actions, and deeds of the Eldari, a new god was born, a very real god that was indeed a reflection of the species that unwittingly gave it life. Its violent birth signaled the eventual death of the species that gestated it. The tomes of the Black Library say that Slanesh was born from the uncontrolled and excessive need for sensation that had come to preoccupy every moment of every day for nearly every Eldari. Through the incredibly advanced technology and psychic mastery that the species had developed over the Tehran millennia, they passed the days living in unimaginable luxury. They had no need to concern themselves with matters such as daily survival, manual labor, or warding off external threats, nor did they feel bound by social constraints. They had no need to think of how their actions would affect others, not even within their own families, since there would never be a time when they needed anything from them. Everything was at all times theirs. Even death had no real meaning, for in that long ago time before Sarnesh's birth, the souls of the Eldari possessed the ability to reincarnate from the Materium into newborn members of their species soon after death. There was yet nothing within the Empyrean to hunger after those souls. The passions that burned deeply within their souls were unbound and freely explored to depths that other intelligent species could not fathom. A mind freed from all concerns of reciprocation, fear of reprisal, 
or death is able to turn fully inward and wander into unknown places, seeking previously unconsidered diversions and sensations. When an entire race unshackled its mind in this way, unusually powerful psychic energy was cast into the warp, and the unnatural essence that resides in it responded. The darkest moment of Eldari history, the fall, is chronicled as a cautionary tale, one that the keepers of the Black Library, known as the Black Council, study continually. Their hope is that some path toward the return to ascendance, or at least a way to avoid their species' ever looming doom, can be found. The tale says that the vast majority of the members of the ancient Eldari species, unprepared as they were for the god their unbridled passion and perversion had birthed, were consumed in an instant. Their minds, and worse, their souls, were connected to chaos in a way they could not have foreseen. They had become slaves to darkness, and when their newborn master hungered, the souls of the Eldari were forfeit as its sustenance. The Allure of Slanesh For most of the remaining Eldari, the birth of Slanesh and the fall of their civilization marked a profound change in the course they would take, not only through history, but also as a people. Retreating to their craft worlds, they forged a new way of life, defined by discipline and a determination to fight back against their doom and survive. This resolve was bolstered by fear, which brought the overwhelming majority of those who resisted any change ultimately in line with the new way, that of the Asuriani path. Slanesh was not content with the souls it had harvested in the moment of its birth. It continued to seek out the remaining Eldari, savoring the succulent taste of each soul it claimed. For a member of a race, once so proud and seemingly eternal, the thought of being snuffed out forever to nourish a twisted god was terrifying. That it was a deity of their own creation only served to magnify the horror. Yet some refused to change, whether from pride, a sense of defiance, or the simple inability to change. Some Eldari, the kindred known as the Drukari, continued down a path of excess and sensual indulgence, and do so to this day. They live each moment, knowing it could be their last, not only in mortal life, but in eternal existence. This heightened feeling of risk, of spending each moment on the edge of a knife, fuels them to indulge in even greater acts of depravity and to push the limits of sensation. They are not, however, the only ones who damn themselves this way. The powers of chaos hold sway over so many mortals, not because they represent some esoteric concept with rare appeal. No, they are so insidious because they are precisely the opposite. With corn, it is the inherent nature of conflict and the struggle for survival. For Nurgle, it is the inevitability of death and decay, and the fear and despair this engenders. For Zeej, 
It is the ever-changing nature of the universe and the need to feel some measure of control through the pursuit of knowledge and worldly power. These are all base instincts of every mortal mind, primal parts of the lives of every intelligent living thing in the galaxy. Slanesh is no different. Its appeal is grounded in such seemingly innocent ideals. Every being's pursuit of happiness and the desire to improve, to achieve it. Very little, if anything, holds more sway over the heart of any mortal, no matter the species, than desire in all its forms. It is universal. All beings want more than they have. They are never content. Where an Imperial Guardsman seeks glory, he finds Slanesh. Where a rogue trader seeks wealth, he finds Slanesh. Wherever there are desires, at the end of the quest to sate those desires lies Slanesh and utter damnation. Its Manifestation While Korn is a frightful and terrible warrior, Zeech's sorcery forces its form to defy mortal logic, and Nurgle is the ultimate embodiment of its own decaying and physically disgusting creations Slanesh alone is divinely beautiful. While generally referred to as a he by humans and as a female by the Eldari, Slanesh is actually neither gender, combining characteristics of both and perfecting them. Slanesh typically appears in an androgynous form in which it is a woman on the right side and a man on the left, with two sets of devilish horns growing from its head. Slanesh can assume any physical form, male, female, both at the same time, or no gender at all, but it does prefer male bodies. In whatever physical form it chooses, Slanesh is Perfection, a long-limbed, elegant figure with a haunting, almost frightening beauty. Its appearance depends more on the observer than the observed, changing eagerly to please and seduce the eye of the beholder. Whatever its form, two pairs of slender horns always rise from the god's flowing, golden hair. Slanesh is often depicted wearing luxuriantly lined, form-fitting armor and bearing a jade scepter that is said to be its greatest treasure. Rumor amongst its cultists says that to look upon Slanesh is to forfeit your very soul to the gods' every whim.